In Operation Crimson Heist, I decided to do my rank placement solo queue. In this video, I'll show you what happened during my 10 placement games, and I'll show you what I've learned. Hello guys, I am Fastan, a Rainbow Six Siege Twitch streamer and a caster. For this season, I really wanted to do my placement solo queue, because normally when it comes to playing ranked, I play in a full stack and I try and play support. So my main question was, would I be able to carry my own weight if I was to go in solo queue? And also, how would people react if they found out that I was a female? Because it's a quite known fact, I guess, within Siege that sometimes females get harassment for being a female or for speaking up. So I wanted to see how people would react and if it would affect the game in any ways. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So my first solo game was on Border. And my team wasn't really communicating. In the first round, I already needed to clutch a 1v3. Job. Well, my team said good job afterwards, and that was really nice. I still communicated, but my team didn't really pick up anything. She's at the door here, on pink, crouching, standing up. Neither did they give bad comments about me calling out. I gave precise goals and tried to yellow ping. We lost a round, but I still tried to give a positive call out. Nice try. We had a leaving teammate, there were no calls, we had a 1-2 split on defense, and it didn't seem to go well. In the first attacking round, I did a lot of droning. I was trying to get my own information, like thermite, so I could open the breach, and the team was quite positive after the round that we won. Nice, well played. Good job. Well played. Teammates were all nice and friendly to us. Thank you. Next round, I asked in chat if they wanted a take from above. I didn't want to over communicate and have people stressed about it, but my team agreed on the plan. Next comes a quite frustrating situation where I maybe backseated a bit too much. I just knew what the last teammate had to do, but he didn't really listen to me. I also think he didn't really know the callouts or didn't really know what to do. So my fault for backseating him a little bit too much. We took the game to overtime though. I had a clutch and I had a refrag of a teammate that died and I finished a round later on. Job. Thank you. It was a good first game, even though they had a teammate that left him quite nice. quickly. So, I'll play so the first game went pretty well. I was happy with my own stats and people weren't really mean or anything. And I also quite enjoyed having a 4.3 KD on my stats in my account. My second solo game was on Cosine. It started okay, but there wasn't really a lot of communicating, but everyone managed to do well. The second round was a bit frustrating because I went for the plant, but my teammate didn't cover me. My expectations were that my teammate was going to cover me, but he didn't. So maybe I misjudged the situation or I should have asked for him to cover me. The third round, there was a quite interesting situation where I thought I shot the picking up guy, but they were already picked up. So I ended up in a little bit of a weird gunfight with the Legion. Play time, play time. We won the fourth round with a 1v1 clutch, and I guess you could say those are quite of impact door? frags. The team was nice to me, and we managed to get a second win in the back. My third game was also on Coast Line. It started horrible. I got prone spawn prone picked, and it led to a little bit of frustration to me. My team played the round well, and I apologize in chat for dying so early, but there wasn't a real response to that. I kept on dying to the same person, the and it was quite frustrating, but my team did really well. I played Top supportive wave. on defense, and I sat on cams a lot. No, in work. a final round, I got two kills on a planter and the cover, so kind of impact kills, but unfortunately the only kills I got in the game. Smooth 4-0 and a third win in the bag, I went 2-3, which was my first negative game. My fourth solo game was on Chalet. In the second round, I had a good entry with Zofia, and my teammates gave short There's but clear calls. I'm on site. One piano. His office. He's very low. Solo, solo. Nice. In the third round, I got slumped by someone holding reading, and I tried to do the same trick, but it didn't work. For the fourth round, or first defense, blue, I was the entry desk because of a rushing Ash. I communicated to my team, and they had the refrag. My teammates had simple communication, nice. and they did their own parts. One more, dead. 
We managed to pull it to overtime, but then in overtime, we lost the first round. In the second round, I wanted to play another operator for the downstairs attack because they roamed a lot. We lost a game, and it was my first solo queue loss. A good thing from this game was lots of communicating, and we had a nice try for sure. My fifth solo game was also on Coastline. I'll take the bulletproof camera. Sorry. One of my teammates was very talkative, making jokes throughout. In round three, I had a nice triple kill while I was roaming. I waited to see what my teammates needed for an operator, and I threw it, and I made it a 1v1. Right there. We lost the round eventually. My teammate was very talkative in helping my teammate to make the right decisions. There was no real cohesion for the last attacking rounds. People were dying one by one. Callouts were given, but the wrong ones. Jaeger was in central lounge, according to them, but he ended up being in courtyard. Teammate plays a lot of Monty, but it doesn't really in work together with a team. So Another loss. And I went six and four, but those weren't really impact frags. My sixth solo game was in Oregon, which happens to be my favorite map. When I gave the first call out, I immediately was asked if I was a girl. Are you a girl? I countered the question by asking that other person if they were Dutch, because they sounded quite Dutch. If there's a big window. I'm on a big window with a C4 if they jump in. Okay. I communicated with him and he gave good calls. My teammates gave good calls in general. People really spoke up after they died. After a few rounds, I kept on playing bad. I apologized to the team and they were like, oh, it's okay, but you give good calls and, and those kind of things. They were really kind and that wasn't really what I expected from a solo queue experience. For attack, I proceeded to play support. I finally got a kill there. In the last round, I decided to enter the building from the other side as where my teammates were. I got a nice double kill, but my teammates were all at blue bunker, so I kind of was a little bit of a distraction for my teammates. We had another win, but I went Not three dead. and four. My seventh solo game was on Cafe Dostoevsky. I played against a full stack. The team had operators like Zero, Dokubi, and they worked really well together. Still, I kept on playing what my team needed. We needed something for the breach, I play mute. In the fourth round, I kind of helped my teammate Ying to push. It could have been seen nice. as a bit of right backseating, but I gave correct calls and helped him to get quite a few kills. On attack, I played support as well, and I couldn't really do anything. I got a nice little one-tap in the sixth round, but unfortunately, it was another loss. My eighth solo game was also in Oregon. I played with a four stack who were quite talkative. In the first round, I was asked if I was a girl. They asked me how old I was, and I ignored a little bit in the beginning, but they didn't believe that I was 23. After the first round, he made a harassive comment. I told him that wasn't okay to say, and he actually apologized. Yeah, that's not very nice to say. In the second round, my teammate gave a really good call, which led to me getting two kills. My teammates worked really well together, and they did their own part. That's the I played support in the attacking round, and the enemies had someone leave the game. It was a fast 4-0 game, and I didn't even die a single time. In game number 9, I played on Canal, and I played with an obvious 4 stack, where people seemed to be on alt accounts, though they were very nice and they were very talkative. I got the last two kills in the first round, and my teammates were nice about it. I gave calls, and my team gave again. calls. They tried to refrag, and that worked well Sorry, in a few situations. I might be able to get refrag. About 40 HP, it's a buck. Where, where, was he like far back? He's behind the white red van, I think. Or the red car. For my last placement game, I played on Clubhouse. I tried to play support on defense. I tried to roam in the last round, but there were little to no calls. I tried to clutch in the fourth round, but also failed to do so. In the fifth round, I had an entry as Ash. I got a few kills, but no communication caused my teammates to be on the other side of the map, and they died. I got into a 1v2 and couldn't clutch it. In the sixth round, we made it to overtime. We won the first overtime round, but then threw the second overtime massively. There wasn't really any communication in the last round, and the enemy stormed side as I was offside. 
I was put in a 1v2 clutch situation, but I didn't really understand my teammate's call, so we lost a round. We lost a game, I went 11 and 7, but most of them were impactless kills. I ended up in gold 3, with a 1.6 KD over these 10 games. I'm not really happy with it, I could say, because the rank could have been a lot higher if we didn't throw the last game. I'm quite happy or satisfied about my own stats and performance because I managed to carry my own weight and I really tried to help the team where I could. So what did I see during my solo queue experience? Well, to be honest, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. People were nice about 9 out of 10 times, and I've only had one person make a bad comment about me being a female. I was able to call them down and the match continued. I've noticed that when I give callouts, people tend to give callouts too. If you stay nice to people, such as well done after they clutch something, or a nice try if they tried something, even if it was a bad try, but just to keep the spirit up, people will likely be nicer to you too. So if you give callouts, if you stay nice to people, the chances of people staying nice to you are a lot bigger. You shouldn't go into solo queue though expecting to win all of your games, because that won't happen. Sometimes teammates or yourself will throw the game, people won't be cooperating, people won't be working together, and things might not always go the way you want them to go. If you feel like your team isn't working together or cooperating, there's one big tip I can give you for the defensive side. Once the preparation phase starts, go and do as many of the reinforcements as you can yourself. Sometimes you'll have randoms that will either reinforce things that are not important or to reinforce things that should not be reinforced at all. If you do a lot of the reinforcements yourself, the chances of randoms reinforcing things that shouldn't be reinforced are a lot smaller. I think I averaged about five reinforcements every single round on defense. Sometimes I did some more, sometimes I did some less, but I immediately want to go and reinforce because sometimes you'll have a reinforcements instead of a rotate and that could really cost you the round. When it comes to teamwork, you might not always have teammates that communicate or work together. So for attacking and defending, it's a quite smart idea to stay together or stay around your teammates. This is what I found out because you can be on the other side of the map and get quite some frags for yourself, but then your teammates end up on the other side of the map in a situation where they find one defender and the defender kills both the attackers, for example, and you're left all by yourself. So stay together with your teammates and you have the opportunity to either refrag them or they can refrag you if you die. Another good thing is to get as much information for yourself or get information for others, like either with cams on defense or droning on attack. And if you really want to be supportive for your team, just wait and see what everyone picks, and then pick something that your team is missing. For example, a Heartbreacher or a Jaeger when there's no ADSs for any projectiles or throwables, so that could really help your team out. I think I can see myself do more solo queue ranked games in the future, because like I said, it really wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. And I might even do some solo queue ranked games live on my stream. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you solo queue a lot? And if so, what is your number one tip for solo queuing? Let's try and help each other out a little bit. This concludes my video about my solo queue rank placements. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.